If you've ever wanted to create really high quality AI videos for free, well, this is the video you've been waiting for. In this video, we'll take a look at Hyper. We've tested every single major AI video creator out there, and we think that without a doubt, this is the best free option available on the market. So in this video, I'll show you how to get maximum cinematic quality from the tool. Let's hop in. So before we get into Hyper, I want to just quickly note that in this video, while of course Hyper is completely free, I will be using some other third-party tools to extrapolate maximum cinematic quality from the videos. Now, you don't have to use these third-party tools. If you want to take the video directly from Hyper, you totally can. But I'm just trying to show you how I found to get maximum quality so that your films can look as good as possible. Okay, let's get going. So inside of Hyper, you have the ability to type in text to get a video, or you can upload your own images as a reference. I always prefer uploading my own images as a reference because it allows me to create consistency and get maximum quality from the tool. So to create my images, I'm just going to go over to the website version of Midjourney. So I'll type in a quick prompt here. I say a cinematic still of a sci-fi film with muted gray color grading shot on film. Now, if I was to be working on a more expansive project with a story that I'm really trying to create a narrative behind, I of course would get more specific. We talk about all of that in our AI filmmaking course, but this is just an example. So I'll go ahead and click enter. Okay, so I have some renders here. It only took a few seconds to render, especially if you're using the turbo mode inside of Midjourney. And you can see that a lot of these images with the same prompt, they look incredible. And you can, of course, begin to pick and choose the right ones for your project. Again, whenever you are working on a story concept, it's all about consistency and creatively art directing the result that you are going for. For our example, I like this shot here of this kind of spaceman that's kind of in this worn out suit. And I will go ahead and click subtle upscale to make sure that our image gets upscaled to a larger size. You want to get maximum resolution from the images that you upload into your image to video converters. And again, after just a few seconds, we have our image here. It's in a really high quality format. And the cool thing is inside of Midjourney, we have the ability to vary, we can zoom, we can up res, we can rerun this in the same style. It's entirely up to you, but I'm going to go ahead and download this image. So one thing that I like to do whenever I'm working on an AI video, is I almost always like throwing it through an image processing tool that can basically get maximum quality from the base image before I put it through my image to video converter. And my favorite tool for doing that is Magnific. So this is an optional step, but I do find that it gets just a little bit more quality from my exported videos. So to use Magnific, all you have to do is go to magnific.ai and you can click their login button. And all you have to do is take your original image here, drag and drop it into the input image section. And for this one, I'm just going to times two because the size is already quite large here. So for our prompt, we'll say a spaceman looks around an alien planet shot on film. The creativity and HDR, I like where it's at, but we are going to turn up the resemblance to six so that it stays more in line with the image that we uploaded and go ahead and click upscale. Okay, so within about 30 seconds, the image has been converted. This is our original and this is after Magnific does its work. You can see the big differences are in some of these areas here. If we kind of scrub, that's before, that's after, before. Just kind of has a, a tinge of softness to it, even though this is supposed to be in focus. But then whenever we adjust the slider, you can see that it adds just some of the crisp detail to make it seem a little more realistic. So we can go ahead and download that to our computer. 
So now let's add some motion to that image. So what you're going to do, click the link below this video to go to the Hyper website. Again, this is free at the time that I am recording this video, so completely free to use. And go ahead and click the button. Now, try not to get distracted because they have a gallery that features some incredible videos from the community. And go ahead and click animate your image. And of course, it's going to ask us to upload an image, so we can just take our image here from Magnific, drag and drop it into the upload image section, and we can paste in our prompt that basically says an astronaut looks around on an alien planet. You can, of course, adjust your prompts, you can get really specific with it, it all just depends on the asset that you uploaded. And we will go ahead and click on the settings button here, this is very important, make sure you change your duration to 4 seconds. And when you're ready, go ahead and click the create button. Rendering the videos from Hyper takes just a few minutes, but I have a few examples that I want to show you directly from Hyper that I created earlier. So we have this shot here of kind of this engine room. I love the, the parallaxing. I think we can create kind of an establishing shot with that one. We have this shot of these engines that are spinning. Now there's a bit of a light leak because I prompted in rocket engines with fire. And so it kind of created this interesting kind of orange light leak aesthetic but I do think that we'll be able to use this shot. We have this shot, which was another roll. I don't know what's happening with that metal there, but it's kind of moving around. We have this shot of this cyborg moving with this woman in the background. I think that shot's pretty rad. This one, not so great. This shot's pretty interesting. It does seem like the ship is moving in reverse, but if we uh, flip the speed there, I think that it would be really awesome. Then we have this shot this guy kind of looking into this futuristic hangar. Okay, so those videos look pretty cool, but there's one big problem. If you take a look at the information for these videos, they're actually only in 720p, which is not great because that's not really a high quality video. So what I always like to do is run my low quality videos through an AI tool to up-res them to get maximum quality. And my favorite tool for doing this is called Topaz Video AI. You'll find a link below this video. It is a little expensive to buy the first time, but since I've purchased this software, they've updated it so many times and they keep adding in new models. So I really, really recommend using their tool. So I'll just grab all of our low res videos here. We'll drag and drop them into Topaz Video. And what I'm going to do for output resolution, we are going to just basically upscale this footage. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the 4K button. The right resolution for you really does entirely depend on your computer. I found that I'm not really able to render at 8K or beyond because my computer begins to hate me for it, but 4K works really well. And 5K is great as well, especially if you want to get maximum quality because you can render in 5K and then scale it down into 4K. In our instance, I'm actually going to render in 4K and scale it down into HD to just get maximum resolution and details from my final result. Now for the frame rate, we will go ahead and select 24 frames per second. That is the cinematic standard, so we will use that one. You also have the ability to slow down your footage, so if you wanted the clip to be 8 seconds long or 12 seconds long, you can just click on this frame interpolation option and you can choose the amount that you want to slow down. For our clips, I like the speed. Most of them are actually in a slow motion style, so I'm not going to slow them down, but of course you have that option. And down here under the export options, you can select ProRes, you can select H.264. It entirely depends on the project you are working on and the amount of storage that you need on your computer. Typically, whenever you are editing a project, you want the editing files to be in a high quality format like ProRes as opposed to H.264, which is more of a file format for delivering to the internet like social media or YouTube. But ProRes uh, is a great option during the editing process. 
And now you're good to go. All you have to do is click export and the videos will export to your machine. To pass video AI, weaving its magic in the air. Chorus dancing, creating a tapestry of dreams. Ooh, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the videos that we have from Topaz Video. So we have these shots here and they are in 4K, so we have much more resolution here. I think we'll be able to work with these. So now you need to actually edit your video together. You can use any video editing application that you want. I really do find that Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve are two of the best options out there. I like using Premiere because it's inside of the Creative Cloud but DaVinci Resolve is an amazing tool and it has some really great plugins and options, especially if you want to get deep into color grading. Okay, so I laid out a quick trailer montage. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so that already looks pretty darn good, especially whenever you begin to scale down the video footage from that 4K resolution into an HD sequence. Now, we want to go in and adjust some of these clips just a little bit to extrapolate a little more quality. So in order to do that, there is an effect that you can use that is paid, uh, but it's really incredible and I use it all the time. It's called Flickr Free. Basically, uh, it removes flicker from your AI videos, which is a very common problem in most AI video generators, especially Runway and Hyper. So all I did is dragged and dropped flicker free onto my video clip there, and we are good to go. I've gone in and adjusted the settings, and what I've ultimately found is the default settings are the best option for you. And if you're inside DaVinci Resolve, you can of course use the deflicker effect to do the exact same thing. Now, one thing that I like to do to my video clips inside of Premiere Pro is I like to go to the Lumetri color panel and under the creative section, you have the ability to sharpen your clips. Now, you need to be very careful with the amount of sharpness that you add to your videos. You don't wanna go overboard with it. I always like adding in about 10 points of sharpness, but again, it depends on your specific clip, so don't go crazy with it. People, especially in the beginning, like really cranking up that sharpen slider, and it usually looks pretty bad, so you know, just use your best judgment. In our specific use case, I'm not going to use a LUT because I think the uh, color grading is pretty interesting across the clips, but if you wanted to keep it a little more stable, you can go in and begin adjusting your color in that way. Now, the very last thing that I want to add into this video timeline, I wanna add in some consistent letterboxing because some of these video clips have letterboxing, some of them don't, so it looks a little silly. Uh, whenever the letterbox dances around. So to create a letterbox inside of Premiere Pro, I'm just going to click on this button right here. That's the new item button. And we will go over here to the color matte button and we'll click okay. And then we will turn this to black. We'll just say black color matte and click okay. And we'll drag this and drop it right on top of our video here. Turn on the eyeball and you can see that it's blank, but that's because it's just a black bar. And I will go to our effects browser. We'll type in crop and drag in the crop effect over our video clip here. And we will crop the top. There we go, just like that. So we'll say 90 for the crop. So now we'll go to our color mat here. I'll hold down option. We'll drag and drop it above and now we'll go over to rotation. I'll type in 180 for 180 degrees. And now we have the exact same letterboxes on the top as we do on the bottom. And now you're good to go. Of course, you can further edit this if you want, go back to hyper, re-render things. The choice is entirely up to you. But if you want to learn how to become an AI filmmaker from scratch, 
be sure to check out our AI filmmaking course at Curious Refuge. Our course is used by artists at every major studio, and we hear stories all the time of artists who go through our training and land full-time jobs in the industry as an AI storyteller. You can join the waitlist by clicking the link below this video. We have courses that start up every single month. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, if you ever have requests for a future video, be sure to let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.